Hey there, my name is Brennan Howe, and welcome back to my Making a Game series. In the last episode, we made our level select properly functional now. So, we have the ability to, well, have our levels be locked, and then as we beat levels, then they slowly get unlocked. So, going into our first level here, adding, after having a cheat just to beat a level instantly, uh, then continuing, now our second level is unlocked, going into that, then beating the level instantly, then going out, and bam, now our third level's unlocked. However, when we go out of play mode and then back in, it all resets. So how about we do something about that? So now, in this episode, we're going to be making our main menu functional with new game and continue, having those actually work. So, let's get into that. Uh, I'm also going to go and our save manager here that we made, I'm going to go and copy that and move over to our main menu and I'm gonna paste it there because I want it to exist um, here as well. And then when we go to the level select, it should destroy the other instance, so it's fine with these existing there. So now, uh, now we're gonna be dealing with this actually saving. So let's get into that. So going into our um, game manager, actually hold up, what scripts here? Menu manager is, menu manager and save manager are the main things we're gonna be dealing with today. So I'm actually going to get rid of everything else because I don't think we're going to be needing it at all. So let's get into that. So our main our menu manager is our main menu manager is pretty plain right now. Uh, a save manager is about to get a lot more crazy. So let's get into that. So first of all we're going to want to get a reference to our uh, save manager. Uh, calling it save manager. Oh Okay, and then down uh, here, then we're actually gonna get that reference, calling this save manager equals um, find object of type, save manager. All right, so actually now we're going to go and do more work to our uh, save manager to actually properly save this. So in order to do this, first of all, we're gonna be making a new class here outside of like, this last squiggly bracket. So like outside of this class, um, save manager inheriting from mono behavior. So we're making a new class that's gonna be called it's gonna be public. Uh, and we're gonna call it or so it's class. We're gonna call it save data and then more squiggly brackets in here. And this is going to this class is what's gonna actually get saved in a file and all of that. So we're going to be then uh, what all that's gonna be saved in here is only one value an int called unlocked level Locked level uh, And it's gonna start off equaling uh, Actually, no, we're not gonna assign that default value there And this is basically gonna be the mirror to this over here. So we're also gonna want to set it to serializable which is just uh, adding here in square brackets system dot serializable. It's just a thing we need to do for it to be able to To be able to do what we want to do for it. So now um, We're gonna be well dealing with some messy complicated stuff uh, In a previous project that I've worked on washed up wizard I made a game saver that was more or less the same thing that had exactly what I'm about to do now with this save data thing and systems that serializable. So I'm looking at this more or less for a uh, template just to make sure I do this right because it is going to be complex and all that. So we're basically going to be having a, we're not going to be going nearly as complex as this. This was more uh, like the game was a lot more complex than this with a lot more things to be saved and all that. Um, so we're going to be making like a new, or not there, this, uh, where are you? A, like a new game function and a continue game function that basically um, make a f they're using this thing called a binary formatter and making a file or opening a file doing stuff to it and then saving it and closing it so uh, oh here's what I'm looking for so here um, this is basically the code that I'm gonna be copying and pasting here so I'm gonna take actually all of this and then um, uh, changing it as we need to. So going back over here, uh, I'm gonna make a public uh, void new game here, uh, and I'm just gonna paste that stuff in there. So we have a, so we're making a, oh wait, right, we're also gonna need to add more uh, system stuff along the top. We're gonna need 
uh, syst we're gonna need to add a system.io and system.runtime.serialization.formatters.binary who uh, over here basically this will be how we store stuff in a text file but it isn't just gonna be a normal text file like a notepad you there are ways that where are uh, there are ways of doing that and you can do that but then it's not as like it's easily decodable and like people can ch change the files which i mean for a small thing like this we don't really care but i guess like if people are you know cheat and change the numbers or whatnot but i'm just going to do it this way because it's slightly more professional and all that so making a binary formatter is calling it bf equals new binary formatter then a file stream which is the file so basically this is the file uh equals file dot create so it's making a file then going to application dot persistent data path uh which is basically uh a file path that unity then like stores data in basically um yeah and it'll exist when you close and reopen the game and then plus and then a square a uh, backwards slash which is like going into a folder and then a um our file name here which we're calling it save data dot dat uh and then now we're getting we're now we're making the class which is this class called save data equaling new save data and then uh those actually all of this these two for loops we don't need so then basically we're saying data so now we're actually setting this value here so data dot unlock uh unlock level equals our unlock level at the top here so that's one this is for if we're making a new game so we're setting this as a default value who now then to actually save the file we're going then bf dot serialize the file and putting the data in it and then closing the file so there complicated stuff basically just putting in this exact code and it'll work just fine the only difference is between here and and there in this basically you're just every variable you made in here so if you had more you're then just assigning it to what you want the default value to be which doing it in this way will be another value is kind of mirrored to something up here who all right so that's that that will uh, yeah then make a new file for us uh as well so this is file.create if it goes to create a file and the file already exists it'll basically overwrite the file with new stuff basically recreating it from scratch so it's kind of like yeah deleting it and making new making a new one more or less so it that'll then be kind of how we delete our files to start a new game all right so now going the opposite way of how we're then um accessing our data we'll then go actually i'm gonna go back here although i believe yeah going then down a lot more to this continue game function i'm just gonna copy this whole thing there we go <laughs> so oh hold up hold up let me back that up um so going public void continue continue game this square, then square brackets then all of this so first we're testing if the file exists um like so if the file already exists then the same thing as before getting this binary formatter then the same thing with the file except instead of file.create it's file.open so then it's opening that file um and then getting uh okay so then it's making or it's getting the data out of the file by get it going the uh binary formatter so here we had binary formatter dot serialize going binary formatter dot deserialize will basically do the opposite and then convert it to data this the save data class so we get this data thing then we close the file because we don't need it anymore and then here then we're just assigning values or we're basically then loading in the values and setting them to the ones that we have up here so these other two for loops i don't need them at all but our unlock level will then be the same so our unlock level here is going to equal the unlocked value that we saved all right so now there are actually there is no condition here for like if the file doesn't exist um there's a different way that it was handled in the other game i'm basically then going to so else i'm just gonna hit go new game um so if the file doesn't exist then it'll create it 
ergo new game anyway so that shouldn't be a problem there i guess you could also make it so that if a file doesn't exist you could disable the continue button in the main menu but we're not going to do that we're just going to do this and then that should work so now we're almost done now from the menu manager when we actually call our new game function then we're just going to want to call the function there so going new game uh so when we hit the new game button then we're just going to go going to want to go save manager dot that new game function that we just wrote and here we're going to want to go save manager dot continue game that function that we just wrote whoa all right now yeah again because all that's all that's being used for is just this unlock level it's pretty easy um yeah so there's not much more complicated stuff that we have to do there in that other game there's a lot more things that got saved a lot more stuff i made a system where you could like in a pause menu be able to change input and whatnot that was uh, not fun <laughs> very interesting to deal with so anyway so going into here now everything's compiled hitting play hopefully this will work i'm gonna hit new game so we have level one here cool or like level one exists level two and three don't now hitting p beating our level now i'm gonna go out of this hit continue theoretically it didn't work great all right so right there's no saving right i that's a little important um so this gets the file but there's no actual saving system i'm gonna make another um another function called save and this will run, I guess the game manager will call this whenever on, when you complete a level it goes to, or basically whenever it updates this value. So in at the end of our uh, level completed function. This, I have to go back to this to remember how to, actually, yeah, let's go back to this to remember how to save. Uh, that was somewhere. So updating, just setting those uh hold up one second it's around here somewhere dot awake fitting all that eh. da, 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 da. somewhere in here uh being uh, those not new scene uh there's also a temporary saver for things that didn't need to get saved when you close the game uh public void level select shoot uh i'm gonna have to fiddle around it might actually have been somewhere else uh or could have been in uh, okay hold up i'll be right back while i find this okay it was me overthinking stuff basically uh in order to save our game we're just going to want to run our new game function again i'm going to make it its own actually uh since the conditions are so similar i'm just gonna i'll do that but then call this, I'm just gonna delete this so we just have save and continue game. Or actually I'll call this load. So it's save and load, that makes sense. Um, otherwise, save. Because this, when it uh, saves or makes a new file, uh, it saves that, that information with this, which when we start a new game is this default, but when we've already loaded in and then done more stuff then it will this will be a different number that is what we want to save so doing this saving this number that we want to save that's changed that'll do the saving that we want to do so now going back here we're going to change this to we'll call this save and load and then over in our game manager when we beat a level over here on so when we beat a level and the we activate the level so um this level thing here then actually we're then going to put our save manager code before it and then actually hold up blah, 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 blah. oh wait no we want to i just realized yeah we only want that code in if we actually beat the level if we don't beat the level then we don't want to save that stuff there so then if that's the case then we're going to want to so do that Actually, I guess we can then only save it if it increases. That uh, would make sense, I guess. Then we're gonna wanna go save manager dot save. Save with the lowercase. And that should, uh, with a capital S there. Capitals matter and all that. Um, there, so then that should work, hopefully. 
So we'll test this out now. Going into this in a second when it loads. So new game, only level one is unlocked. Beating level, cool, level two is unlocked. Beating it, level three is unlocked. Backing up, hitting continue, all the levels exist. Hitting new game, the levels still exist. <sighs> okay, <laughs> right. If we go back out and then hit new game, then it doesn't work that way. Uh, 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 okay, so how about instead I go public, void, new, and then it will set unlocked level equals one and then call save. And then going back to menu manager and having it call new. That should work. See, bug testing. Well, that's not right, bug testing, but... Well, uh, yeah, testing your game, actually making sure it works. Yeah, all that. So beating our level. Boom, we have level two. Going back, new game. Only level one is there again. Going and testing load game again. Going out, then in. Cool. That works. Uh, there's one minor change I'd like to make if I can find it. Uh, back to our level manager here. I'm actually going to set this to awake because I noticed there's a slight flicker in what was active and what wasn't. So setting it to awake should hopefully do that. Like in setting a, in setting a button inactive, like I saw the button kind of flicker. Now it does not. Cool. So, and quit game again. Yeah, it only works when uh, we're actually having this in our own application. Alrighty then. So that'll do it for this episode. We have a proper saving system now and you can then go and add more stuff to be saved down here just more variables that get saved actually i'm also going to while i remember it otherwise i'm gonna forget i'm gonna get rid of our cheat here to automatically beat levels we don't want that to be there we can also make a separate like cheat manager script that deals with all that and that's an option you, you could also there's like special thing where you can have certain code run if you're in the editor versus like if it's running in its own, um, like if it's an actual build of the game, and you could do stuff with that. But again, we don't really need to do that here. So you can add more stuff here to be saved, and then it's just a matter of basically doing the same thing you did here, but with the new stuff that you wanted to be, that you want to get saved. That's or no, yeah, sorry, that's fine. Um, yeah, so that's about that. All right, so. And that does it for this episode, then. In the next episode... Okay, I think we're basically... Okay, so now that we're done this, our game is actually done, I would say. Uh, done enough for what I wanted to do for this series. Actually, this has already gone, like, way bigger than I was expecting it to be. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to go and build our game into its own application. I'll show you how to do that, and then also go through some of the settings that have to do with that and all of that and then i guess we'll kind of do a sort of end of series review of everything that we've done sort of thing a big recap thing or something like that so that'll be next time i guess all right so that'll be it for this episode thank you all so much for watching and as always have a good day